Hey, well, welcome, welcome to the watch list. Today I'm here with Laura Bennett. Hello. My name is Russ Matthews from Real Dialogue, and we're doing Death of the Rom Com. Yeah, they seem to have kind of fallen off a little bit from the beautiful era that used to be, I would say, early 2000s rom coms and before. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, that's right. Now, we're not talking about Death of the Rom Com because of the films that we're actually going to talk about this week <laughs> as much. Maybe. Maybe. But, but it is, but I think they actually are a catalyst to kind of understanding kind of why we are. So I think yeah. we're going to be looking at Love again and also what's love got to do with it one's in cinemas and the other one's streaming right now mm. and so we're going to start off with love again and yeah. kind, of look at, kind of consider this is a, a new one that's kind of come we have actually uh it's a story of a music editor yeah um, journalist at, a journalist at the uh the new york chronicle and rob he actually gets this random text message on his new work phone from a myra ray who has lost her boyfriend in the in the couple of years prior and she's actually kind of going through and reminiscing and and kind of talking to her former boyfriend who's passed mm. away um on the on the message because his number is actually now this rob's new new number and so rob is trying to figure out who she is what's going on what's all happening and so in this kind of serendipitous moment of texting in this modern era they try to come together and here's what's interesting about it it involves Celine Dion, because... Yeah, which for me was one of the stranger parts of this movie. Why? You know, I mean, he they, they, they tie it in because he's a music... Um, journalist, right? Yeah, so, so he's, he's got to do like a her. profile on her, and there, there is, there is a point in the story as to why right. she's there. But I feel like bigger picture, it seemed like an odd choice in this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it, it's kind of an interesting one. So it's a, it's a interesting lo- uh, one. And I did, I actually, I'll tell you, I took my rom com trilogy with, or the uh, the trifecta yeah. of my daughters with me, and we went to a chicks at the flicks kind of um, screening of this, mm. and people love this movie. I mean, they really yeah. enjoyed it because that was the target audience. I wasn't because I was one of the only men in the whole audience, you know, there. And so but people really seem to love it and really kind of in, enjoy kind of the uh, the frivolous nature of it in, yeah. in a way. But um, I don't know as far as quality, it's not going to go down as one of the greatest rom-coms of all time. Well, but it was OK. But. And if you think about it, so it's got Sam Hewen in it, who will, he built a big fan base from Outlander. Right. You've got Priyanka Chopra in there as well. You already mentioned Celine Dion. This was meant to be it feels like they're setting this up as a movie that is bringing back the rom-com, particularly because it's got a cinematic release. Sure. So many romantic comedies right now go straight to streaming. They do. I think of all the Hallmark ones at Christmas. I think of, you know, the the in the last few years, we haven't seen big, I think of ones like 10 Things I Hate About You or even You've Got Mail, 27 exactly. Dresses, all of these classics that were not necessarily like the highest quality movies overall, but for their genre, they're really good. And so when I saw that Love Again was coming out, I thought, all right, here we go. you got these really strong actors in this. You've got the fun idea of having Celine in there as well. This is going to be something kind of magical and fun, but it was, I think why it doesn't necessarily translate with everyone, because I know in your cinema, people loved it, had fun with it. In my cinema, (laughs) people were audibly sighing and like shocked at some of the elements of this storyline that they just thought, what? Like you heard people go, oh, like this is (laughs) the cringeworthiness of the way that Sam Hewen's character Rob, there was just this awkward nervousness that seems so unnecessary with how he interacted with Maya and then or Myra right. and then the way that they just seemed to fumble in terms of how they spoke to each other was really off-putting and I don't know that they had the right chemistry to pull it off. And then Celine Dion is there. <laughs> yes, she's being interviewed and I feel like they're almost trying to do like the Notting Hill thing, right? right like totally. where you've got that kind of character in the junket interview setting and there he is learning life lessons from this big time celebrity. But she's playing herself and then telling these what seem like obscure stories about her own personal life and her relationship with her husband, Renee, who'd passed away. And then you get a story about Seal in there as well. And it's like, what? Why? It, <laughs> I don't understand what the point was of it. I was like, is this almost like an autobiographical op- opportunity yeah. for her to somehow share her personal journey within this movie. Know. She was a producer, a, a producer as far as in that. And, and obviously her music was kind of showcased in this film yeah. in a way, but it did feel like it was kind of retrofitted in, honestly. Mm. I mean, it was it was fine. And I think that it definitely will hit the target market, but I don't think a lot of people will um, necessarily go back and see it over no. and over and over again. But I think what you really touched on something that I think that we're going to get to one of the other film here in a minute, but I'm really c- kind of curious. 
one of the things I see as being the issue with the death of the rom-com is um, what I find we've missed is that it is the chemistry mm. that we've, we've kind of, we're waiting for that, you know, two beautiful people put together that they should just work. And it unfortunately doesn't, you know, I mean, yes, you know, you, they're waiting for that Mr. And Mrs. Smith experience, you know, Brad Pitt, Angelina mm -hmm. Jolie, two of the most beautiful people in the world brought together. <laughs> there's automatic passion and you want that, but it didn't, didn't happen with this film. I, I agree mm. with you. I feel that night, both of them kind of came from different kind of genres of film and they just really didn't quite mix. But I, I find that they kind of keep doing that. Hollywood keeps trying and they lose sight of the fact that, no, you really need to find two people. They don't have to be yeah. beautiful. Tom Hanks isn't the most attractive <laughs> of men. I mean, I'm not trying to, sorry, Tom, but I mean, but, but it's not necessarily, but you know, he is, he is still in some of the greatest um, rom-coms yeah. of all time. Billy Crystal. Come on, you go all the way back to When Harry Met Sally. Not a leading man. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Again, Billy, you know, if you're watching. It's really one of those things where you kind of, but yet they had chemistry yeah. with their lead. But actors. then I wonder if that, for me, is something that didn't really translate with this, right? Like, because there's a few things that this movie does differently from normal. Like, one thing to touch on is the fact that, like, what... Go back half a second, right? So normally with a classic rom-com that works, you do have like that charming guy. And for better or worse, these are generalizations and stereotypes. Sure, yeah, and there's definitely. probably some stuff they need to readjust about how this works. Like this is why there's an unhealthy side to the rom-com. Exactly. But you get this classically good looking guy. He's confident. He's charming. He knows how to woo the girl. She tends to be a little bit more like delicate, reserved, unsure. And he's this like strong brawnish guy that's going to give her the life confidence she's been waiting to have. And it's only because she met him that suddenly she can realize that right sure there's some unhealthy dynamics in that but it's the beauty of a rom-com and you know everyone kind of goes for it I think what they did differently with love again is that Rob his character is awkward like yeah he's like this big tall guy and like that classic good looking thing but one thing they did was mess his hair up entirely. I'm like, your hair you doesn't look right. Hair. It didn't look right in this movie at all. So I go, okay, physically right. they've done something weird with you that means you're not classically fitting the rom-com, you know, trope, right? Sure. And then also you're this awkward guy who doesn't seem sure how to talk to girls, who doesn't quite seem confident and how he interacts with his love interest. So I'm like, there's something weird about this. It doesn't feel right. And maybe it's because they're trying to break the stereotype of guys yeah. always being the confident one, girls always being the nervous sure. ones. I like that they did that, right? I like that you're breaking that. Right. But I just don't know that it translated so well. And then yeah. the way they edited it in some of the shots, they're, they're pondering in awkward ways, like lingering on his eyes as he's waiting, you know, in certain moments, like these little things that broke my ability to just get lost in it because it's sure. like you're making this so awkward. Like why can't these two people just talk to each other? Right. And then also at the heart of it, like a romantic comedy should be about this connection between two people and sure right. there's that that passion but there's like there's a love and all of these things. But I've noticed more and more there's some kind of broken thing or like a deception or in a lot of the Christmas movies in the last year, you, you're meant to be rooting for the couple who actually are having an affair. Right. You want, I noticed that in so many of three out of like the five I watched mm, over Christmas right. to review. We're wrong. Yeah. We're, yeah, yeah. We're all about the affair that was meant to take off and that was true love. And I go, wait a minute, why are we celebrating or meant to be going for that Absolutely. idea of love? In this one, there's a core deception at the heart of it where Rob hasn't told Myra about these messages, that he's not really her dead husband, right. but he knows all of this. And then they build this relationship on top of a deception you know is going to have to come out at some point. It's like, why aren't we, like, yes, it makes for the drama of the movie, but why aren't we saying, hang on a minute, if you just told her truthfully what's going on, you could build this relationship on truth and trust and not a deception that you know is going to have to unfold at some point or come out i think it's, i think it's a, gr a great point and i think that because like a film because actually because i was trying to think of like a film like the proposal you know the whole uh, yeah you know, that one was where the guy was kind of bumbling and she was the dominant one and it worked you know mm -hmm. it just ended up working now granted they kind of came together at the end and it, but i mean sandra bullock pretty much could be on almost any rom-com yeah and she's convincing right but the other thing that really stood out to me too and and this is actually more of a cultural thing and mm. how our culture has changed. You know, you look at the the great rom-coms of the 80s and 90s and all that sort of thing, but yet now how where we are sitting now and why some of them don't work is also we have this it was even seen in this one scene where funny enough where where Chopra she was actually in the scene with her actual husband Nick Jonas and mm -hmm. it was so uncomfortable. But this this insta romance culture that we live in that it's the swipe left swipe swipe right mm. kind of thing that kind of thinks that 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 an algorithm is going to somehow 
help us to find our relationships and all yeah. that sort of thing. And not that I'm not, just so you know, I'm not against online dating and all that sort of thing. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. It's just that what I'm saying is that there, that may be able to get things started, but it's not necessarily how you can define your relationship. But yeah. don't you think that that our culture has changed mm. in the way I don't know. Romance just isn't quite the same as as it was in the previous eras. Maybe. Things have certainly evolved. Like right. the way, even from a practical point of view, the fact that there is online dating as an option now compared to the way even, you know, 20, 30, 50 years ago, people would be meeting each other. The whole idea of how you meet and connect and fall in love is really done differently. But then I think the key fundamentals of a healthy relationship, those are timeless. Right. Like whether you meet somebody on the street, at church, on an app, however you meet, Respect is still a key fundamental, totally. like setting clear expectations, understanding what each of you are looking for in a relationship, trust and clear, honest communication. All of these things are just about decent human relationships. <laughs> Those don't change. Like the thing that brings you together doesn't actually influence how you should treat one another. And people on all of these different platforms and even in face-to-face -face interactions, all of right. us do have different beliefs and, you know, kind of values, I suppose, that we assign to how you should treat people. Mm. Some people are more transactional and think that's acceptable. Some people are at the other end where it's like, this is really serious and I'm only about this in an intentional point of view. And that's how they approach it. And you find people that are like-minded with you in that regard so we right. all exist in relationships on a spectrum for sure but i think establishing a healthy relationship with that person who's on the same page as you the way we do that doesn't change and it's really important oh and i and i love what you said is there are aspects of relationships that are timeless you know i was just reading in my devotions this morning the song of solomon and you can see you're seeing this passion you know because I, I think that's one of the things that we lose sight of even god had an original plan for relationships and you know a man and a woman you know they weren't just created to procreate it's actually they're meant to be there's this passionate relationship and the beauty that the timelessness of it that it can be found and it can be within that relationship and within the confines of that, that mm. beautiful relationship and so i think that sometimes we've lost sight of that mm. um in thinking that well no i'll just let the computer figure it out for me and then maybe uh, maybe it'll work out or something, or I don't want to necessarily invest the way mm. they should. And I think that I, when, as I'm reading through the text of the Bible, I'm going, oh, this is investment. They know yeah. each other. They've invested in this relationship. And also they know what it is that needs to be said. Because you can never say it enough. You know, you, you say, I love you to someone, but you can't say it enough, but yet you might need to say it differently and you mm. need to communicate it differently. It's like when you write a review, I mean, I, when I write my reviews, I have a thesaurus next to me because I can only, there's only so many good words that can actually describe a film, mm. but yet you can go through and kind of figure it out. Well, it's no different in a relationship. I can say, I love you, but it's, you know, you need to make sure you're able to do it kind of different ways and, and mm. find out what it is about this person and investing in that relationship. That's beautiful. And this anyway. is why you have the five different love languages because everybody <laughs> everybody has their different ways of being loved and expressing love. But I actually, the other movie that we want to talk about oh, yeah, today, yeah, yeah. We, we called, um, the other movie. it's called What's Love Got to Do With It. This is a far stronger example to me uh, right. okay. of, of what a romantic comedy can be, okay. but also the way that it has a conversation about love. So there's, there's some parts of it that I felt were – not necessarily like the best in terms of romantic comedy movies, mm. but the story of this film, you've got two friends, Zoe and Kaz. Zoe is this documentary filmmaker. Sure. She's really passionate about finding these unique stories and bringing Lily them James, to life. Right. Yep, Lily James. And her best friend, Kaz, they come from really different cultural backgrounds. So she's kind of stereotypical kind of Western ideas right. around love. He comes from a Pakistani background. Arranged marriages mm. is the way of it for his family. And right. he is of the younger generation thinking about doing things a little bit differently and they meet in this uh they're having this conversation and she suddenly decides I think I want to make my next film about you about arranged marriage about falling in love let's tell this story and of course in the process <laughs> maybe they fall in love and maybe it's not going to be an arranged right. marriage and will his family accept that okay so in this uh, film what I thought was quite incredible was that in for the first time at least I can remember in this particular way, the idea of arranged marriage and that concept of romance as opposed to the Western concept of 
we'll just meet, we'll just fall in love, we'll like work this out, it's passion, it's romance. Right. They were put on screen in a way that I've not seen before and also respected in a way that exactly. I've not seen before, yeah, which was right. really different. Like Kaz's heritage in this movie, it's Muslim, it's Pakistani, he's got really clear religious beliefs about why arranged marriage matters, around why relationships and sex aren't transactional. All of these different things are brought up and they're not belittled, which normally those kind of things in a lot of romantic movies are. Right. Like it's the the characters that choose to save himself for marriage or that choose not to, you know, approach relationships in a really uh, you know, quick kind of way, they're normally stereotyped in such a negative light. But that doesn't happen in this movie. And I think it gives them space to have a more meaningful discussion around what actually creates love and what do these sorts of you know modes of intimacy or relating to somebody else what actual right. function do they serve and i actually there's a line in this movie that i really liked i think it i think it was like you know we talk about falling in love and head over heels and all of that and one of the older characters one of the wise mums says something along the lines of you don't want to fall into love you want to walk into you fall into like and walk into love. Mm. And I thought, yeah, like that's such a different yeah. way to conceptualize this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah which we don't always, we, ju- we no. just don't always hear a slow, intentional approach to romance broadcast in cinema. We normally hear this like fast and quick and with anyone type perspective. Totally. Well, and I think that that's, I think you really bring up a great point that this really shows the two cultures, but also how we live in this world where these, all these culture clashes occur all the time. And so to be able to see the value, um, well, really, they really show the value almost more of the kind of the arranged marriage in a way, even though it still does. It, interestingly enough, it wasn't like it all worked out. I no. Mean, I don't want to spoil anything for people. Mm. But, but then on top of it, that this relationship, how do you come to terms with you know, if you're going to meet together as a couple, and especially in our multicultural world that we do, that how this can actually work and, and realize that you have to respect not just the person, but also all that they bring with them as far as their culture, their heritage, mm-hmm. everything that is. And so valuing that, I mean, even watching the Emma Thompson character who plays her mother. Oh, James that Ford. was so cringeworthy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she's where she's I trying forgot about so that. hard. She's trying so hard to mm. fit in. But yet it's still lovely because it seems quite genuine in so many ways. But um, I, I agree. I think that it, it it was a fascinating delving into. And I think they really tried to do something new and different with um, the rom-com kind of twist. Mm. And then on top of it, you know, the fact that these two people live together all of their childhood. So they've known each other yeah. for years. And so they've been kind of friends. But there was always something of something there. Yeah. That they really didn't know if they could really even cross that bridge. Yeah, well, because they had to have the conversations of the cross-cultural side of their relationship and then also the just different perspectives on like love and religion and all of these things. Like it's uh, it's a fantastic movie because you're touching yeah. on religious heritage, cultural heritage and all of these elements that make for a more meaningful and I think contemporary perspective on relationships than maybe what we would have seen compared to some of the early ones. But I would definitely say I don't think we've reached the era of rom-coms being totally at the top of their no. game. I think we just have to accept that they're not necessarily dead, but we're not in we're not in like sweet peak. Spot. No. Yeah, no, no, they definitely we've got to re, we got to we have to find it again. But I want to ask you before we move move on to the next thing. So w- these two films, would you put them on your watch list? Oh, I th- I think the uh what to do What's love got to do with it? Sorry, what's love got to do with it? I think it's worth a watch. I feel like if you're in the position, though, if you're on the dating scene, you're still looking to find your person, all that kind of stuff, it will relate to you a lot. And there's probably going to be some moments where you go, oh, my gosh, I just relate to Lily James. I feel exhausted. (laughs) Like there's something so true about that experience. So it's not a rom-com that allows you to escape reality. It's a rom-com that takes you right into reality. It does. So bear that in mind, but it's a fantastic movie. Love Again, I would... I. I actually would just leave it, to be honest, because right. I go, this isn't for all of the people that are seeing it because of Sam Hewen and they love Outlander and all of that. He doesn't have what he has in Outlander sure. in this movie. Like, just skip it. But if you're just wanting, you know, a night off and this is silly and I don't really care, 
you'll it'll be fine. It'll but be I'd, fine. I wouldn't I if I didn't see it, I wouldn't go to see it. I, I'm actually right on the same uh, same page, even though I did enjoy the night at going out with my daughters and ha- well, having them enjoy yeah. this film and enjoying it together. It was, you know, as far as a rom-com, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Yeah. But I think that of the two films, I think what love's got to do with it has a little bit more to offer and also has something that you can actually delve into a little bit with a little bit more depth. So I put probably put that on the watch list yeah. over, over love again. A hundred percent. Yep. And so now kind of looking at that, um, kind of the considerations we've talked about a few, but mm. there were, there was a sweet spot. There was, yeah. there were times maybe, I don't know if it was an era, but there were some, just some great couples, but then on top of some great films mm. that um, you re- really recommend. I'd really love to hear what some of your favorites are. I have some, I, I'm going to actually throw in a few that men would probably even enjoy. Yeah. You know? Okay. Cause I mean, I think sometimes <laughs> I think rom-coms kind of get thrown into the ladies category, yeah. which is fair. But I think that there are some that four guys could actually go out and enjoy themselves too yeah. and actually be, be together. But I'd love to hear, like, so give me a couple on why you like what, yeah. what, what you love about Look, them. And there's probably more to say on the whole conversation of the guys versus women watching these movies. That's a whole other tangent. But I just think <laughs> for be- like some of these movies, I will say, this is a bunch of disclaimers before I give you my list. Right, okay, because go for it. Because I watched these many years ago mm-hmm. when I had different <laughs> views on love and relationships than I probably do now as like an older, mature woman. And and I also think like there's probably a naivety. There's there's probably a naivety that allowed me to enjoy these. And right. when I look back, I go, oh, that's really not healthy relationship advice. <laughs> but so me recommending these is not about me thinking that they are great examples okay. of healthy relationships. But no judgment here. Okay. No judgment here. How to lose a guy in ten days. Okay. I did love it. I thought it was fun. And of course, the chemistry and the the dynamic between Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey, like they've done a few movies together. They have. And it, it's just fun and it's silly and it works and they have a com- comedic magic that they comes do. off on they screen. They both are great at comedy. That just allows you to enjoy it. Like sure. to me, I really enjoyed that. 27 Dresses, I think I mentioned it before, but that again, there's, I think it's like there's a fun innocence and an ease and a silliness to some of these movies that I think was really was there in those ones, but it's right. kind of missing from some of them now. I also feel like a film like The Proposal. I loved that. Sure. Sandra Bullock, oh. Ryan Reynolds. And it was oh. Ryan Reynolds before he was totally at peak Ryan yeah, yeah, Reynolds yeah, yeah. stage. Yeah. And he was just hilarious as well. Like for me, it's those ones that just have a fun to them. And you know how they're going to end. You always do. Sure. But it's like there's there's not too much at stake. Right. You know, what What are the ones you recommend oh, yeah. boys? Oh, no, I got I to gotta say, though, because yeah. definitely because I'm mean, again, I keep bringing my daughters, but they love rom-coms. And I mean, we've had we had them all on the shelves, the DVDs and stuff. The proposal was on regular. Re, you know, I yeah. mean, I could almost do all of the lines. I could do Betty White and all this. Sort yeah. of stuff. So it was that, that's a great one and still stands up. Funny enough, yeah. it just kind of still stands up. Now, okay, so it's kind of they're, they're the ones that would probably appeal to men, mm-hmm. just because interestingly enough, they kind of have men in the lead roles as well as but it's still being kind of a rom com. And some of these may not be as politically correct because of some of the issues that have gone on here in recent history. But the first one is Hitch. Yeah. So Hitch. Yeah. And so even though you can say what you want to about um, you know, Will Smith right now. It still is a great film, mm. and it was one too. I honestly, it, 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 they focused on Will Smith, but it was really Kevin James's film. Yeah, and Kevin James owned that film, and it was great. It just kind of mm. showed that the awkward guy could actually have a great romance kind of thing. And yeah, even just being himself. And maybe that's what guys are looking for in a romantic comedy. Like, oh, I don't yeah. want to necessarily speak for the males listening right now, but that idea <laughs> that that idea that you can be nervous and find confidence, like even right. Crazy Stupid Love, is like that. Right. Where you get this guy that feels out of his depth, and you just need that person. Person, that mentor sure. who's going to help you shine, you exactly. know, like that's what you, you like. Who to... doesn't want Ryan Gosling and as a mentor? Exactly. <laughs> I'll be Emma Stone. But we, it's like just basically as a misfit, you can still right. find love. Like sure. that's the story we want to be told because sure. everyone feels like a misfit in some way. Oh, they do. Anyway, and I think that that's, that's what's great. And actually the, the second one that I actually recommend, it is... It isn't your typical rom-com, but it is because it has action in it too. But it's a film. It's a James Mangold film who's a great director. It's called Night and Day. And again, <laughs> Tom Cruise, maybe not, not your favorite person sometimes, but man, it was so much fun. That's it, action and romance. But That's it is why. Action, but, it, but it's also comedy. I mean, mm-hmm. the thing is, they have they actually have the chemistry. I think Cameron Diaz and Tom Cruise had that chemistry. Because yeah. Tom Cruise doesn't necessarily, I don't put him up as a romantic lead. No. Hard, no. You know, but this one, he worked. It mm. worked just mainly because he was be, able to be action Tom Cruise. Yeah. He runs. 
you know, because the typical, he runs, he the always runs. Tom Cruise film. But it, it is it is one that we've watched over and over again. Go, man, it's just really a lot of fun, mm. romantic. It does have comedy, but it does have a lot of action. And there. I wonder, like, as you're saying this, I think, yeah, these were the these were some of the really good romantic comedies. And I wonder if now one of the challenges for romantic comedies is because there is actually a necessarily like it's necessary that they have this responsibility but i wonder if it affects the movies there is more of a responsibility to portray healthier examples of relationships yeah. to not be so stereotypical and there's kind of like romantic comedies used to get away with a lot whereas now there's more accountability to say hang on that girl shouldn't speak to that guy like that hang on where's the consent here hang on right. like all these different things that society are now demanding of what we see on film is probably affecting the way these movies are made like it is affecting them right and so you're not necessarily seeing them done with as much ease and kind of they're not as nonchalant as they might have once been no i, I think it, it used to be lazy writing that they should mm. just be able to kind of do oh well, we can get away with that gee you can say that or you yeah. can do that nowadays you're like no i don't think you really can mm. and i think that's that's fine i think actually that we've changed as a culture maybe but that yeah i don't think that that means that romance is dead and also i no. don't think that comedy is dead because i even you could almost argue that there aren't that many good comedies out there that mm. are accessible for the broader audience um, yeah for many and so uh so yeah so i think that oh and i was just going to add another one that was again it's another probably not politically correct but uh, it's a woody allen film called midnight in paris which is mm. uh, a great great one where you know you've got uh, just this great it was just this fascinating look at romance and how it actually how it transcends the eras and the ages that i just find that um i just thought it was just a phenomenal one it's one that i was really surprised by mm. and we really enjoyed it's a different type of comedy uh, but again it has a man kind of as the the lead um in owen wilson who's really just playing woody allen is always yeah doing. but but it's these are some great films that i think that people can mm. kind of embrace and look maybe a, a slightly different in the way they're looking yeah. at romantic comedies i think it is good that we don't eliminate male characters and men from this discussion and this genre as well, right? Because right? I there is there is a space for male stories about love and the male experience of trying to be accepted and find romance. There is space for that to be told just as much as the girl who's looking for the guy that's, that's going right. to sweep her off her feet and all of that sort of stuff. Like we tend to go stories about love. That's for women. But I do think there should be ones that look at a man's experience as well. Well, but don't you think that's one of the issues within our culture, I think, that has caused... The death, you know, we're seeing the death of the rom coms. Not that it's completely mm. done, but it, but that the, the, the demise maybe it might be a way of yeah. putting it is kind of the cynical nature of people even looking at love and mm. romance. You know, I mean, you hear, you know, you hear in the crowd, you go, oh, gross, uh, you yeah. know, when, when they're when it's the kind of stereotypical thing. But yet, mm. we need romance, both men yep. and women. We do yep. maybe look at it differently, but yet we do need it. And the thing is that I do going back to one of the points before is that I think God gave this to us. The beauty of it. it's not just it's not just kind of the initial connection, but it's one of those things you kind of continue to grow, just like mm. you were saying from the grandmother from um, What's Love Got to Do With It. Yeah. It's, it's, it's even more beautiful, especially within a marriage relationship that you're able to kind of grow and, mm. and deepen that relationship yeah. on the a long haul. Well, and even as you say that, come, come right back to the foundational things. If God is love, as the Bible describes him, if he is fundamentally the entire embodiment of love and everything that that means, of course we crave it. Of course we sure. want it. Of course it should be both a male and female conversation. Of course it's something that we all desire in some way because it's the inherent identity of our creator. Right. So our desire for this stuff, it's its part of what's within us, totally. right? Yeah, so, totally. Oh, I think it's great. I think God is a God of romance. God's a God of comedy. I mean, he made yeah. the platypus. Come on. I mean, <laughs> you know, but I mean, seriously, I mean, God laughs. I mean, it's, it's even in the Bible. So it, yeah. we can actually see and value the fact that both of these things exist. It's part of God's character. Mm -hmm. and I think we can enjoy it. I, I don't know. We'll, I, I don't know if we'll ever kind of fix whatever it is with it is the rom-coms. It'll mm. come around. It'll come back. It'll make its own again. I think next week, you know, next episode of the watch list, we might just solve some of this because I want to preempt us talking about about Fast X, which is which at the heart of it has one of the greatest love stories in cinematic Does history it. between Dominic Toretto and Letty. That is one of the greatest romance stories of all time. It's housed in an action franchise. It is the longest running in genuinely on screen that right. we will have seen in anything. So next time, Russ, 
we are going to solve all the problems oh, of the romantic comedy world in the form are. of we're, cars <laughs> and action. Fast, fast and I just cannot wait. Looking forward to it. Yeah, because well, because well, we're also going to be talking about Little Mermaid too, which is yeah. interesting. So it's going to be a big fun. episode. It'll be a big episode. We'll be talking a bit about romance and, and maybe not the rom com, <laughs> but we'll definitely be looking at it. And of course, family. It, so, uh, so hey, well, hey, I think I think we're yeah, it's, it's all about family. Oh wow, I can't we should wait stop. We should stop. Episode. We Every, can't say too much about next episode. No, we can't. We can't. Well, and actually, this is pretty pretty much we've come to the end of it anyway. It's always such a great time with you, Laura. Thanks so much for being on the watch list that we're looking at film through the lens of faith, as we say. So uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, also just kind of make sure you know that we're always going to be here. Pull up, get your popcorn, pull up your seat, and make sure you listen to the watch list.